get a tip. This gentleman's inside. Um, we'll call him John Doe. Yeah, where's it? Warren unit, open the door. Yeah, he's definitely inside the house. Uh, we have a warrant for his arrest. When you open the door, keep your hands where we can see him. Down on the floor. Get down. Come on, get down. man. Get down. Get down. When we arrest him, he will be in county jail. We will take him to county jail and book him in. He'll remain there until he sees Judge Jones. Ten years ago, drug court was implemented in Greater Cleveland. Since that time, it has treated over 1,168 men and women. If it wasn't for drug court, I would be dead. I really would. Drug court saved my life. It got my, my life back on track. Without drug court, I would be homeless. I probably would be dead because I would have kept using drugs. Basically, I have a revolving door. Uh, people come in the criminal justice system, get charged with the drug offenses, they go to jail, there's no type of rehabilitation. As a result, once they release, the cycle just continues. Parents today, we see with these significant drug problems were the kids in the families where the parents had significant drug problems in the 90s. It's, we're on this treadmill to nowhere with some of these families. We gotta do something different. When we talk about crime and drugs, we realize that probably 80% of all of our crimes are somehow related to drugs. Because it's such a major problem, it affects everything we do. It's costly. Um, we are arresting people and incarcerating them uh, based on drugs, and they, they are stressing the system. If we do drug court right, we cut into the population. We'll stop the overheating of the justice system. This is not only a, a way to save lives and give people a second chance, but more importantly, reduce the problems of crime in the community by understanding that addiction is a terrible thing and that people need to feed that addiction. How do you do that? How do you break the stranglehold? When you're drug addicted, we can't just give you a shot a penicillin if you have a, an infection. It's not as simple as just giving you a pill and, hey, the thing's fixed. Addiction is specifically affects the part of the brain that controls judgment um, and behavior. And therefore, people's judgment dissolves rapidly uh, and their behavior becomes completely unpredictable. In three years, it completely destroyed my life. Took away my home, my family, everything. I lost my house, lost everything. I mean, I knew I was addicted, and uh, I, there's nothing I could do about it. But I'm, I, I'm glad I did get caught. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm glad I did, because it saved my life, turned my life around. So. Well, there's no cookie cutter approach to addiction. We want to change the way people think. We want to change behavior. The first task in treating addiction is to convince the person that they have a big league problem. But at first I didn't think I had a problem. I just thought that I just got caught. <laughs> In policing, we really have started to realize that there are other options, probably better options, that we really have to look at. And drug court is one of those options. It allows us to find individuals with a problem help them become healthy, correct their issues, and make them productive citizens. Now, I believe jail is appropriate when we're dealing with drug dealers and people who just aren't going to get it and aren't going to participate. Then there's no alternative. But uh, I think a first step and a good first step is to try to get them treatment. You know what? My thoughts on if you do drugs, you should go to jail. I don't think that's fair because jail, jail you do not get no help. There's no question that uh, the results of treatment are exceptionally good. The biggest problem is uh, access to treatment more than anything. First the thing is to get them to learn how to trust. You're in here with some people that you don't know, never seen, probably don't like that you're here, don't want to look at them, and then you got somebody sitting at a desk that comes out and talk to you that you don't know either and saying, talk to me. That's not happening. So usually in the beginning we're working on communication. What we have found from the treatment community, they come back and tell us that Drug court works because it allows the people in the treatment area to do their job and they know the individuals don't give them the full attention. If the individual fall behind, they have the court they can come to as a hammer. So in many cases, I view my role as a hammer in conjunction with the treatment communities. 
beauty of, of a drug court situation is this defendant comes in and he, he or she has drug in their drugs in their union, the court sanctions them immediately. We don't think of drug courts as being soft on crime. We think of them as being smart on crime because what we try to do is break the cycle of recidivism and why they end up in the court system. The program's often a lot tougher than just serving their time. The year-long drug court program is based on sanctions and rewards. This progressive system encourages clients to be responsible and accountable for their actions while continuing on their path to graduation and a sober lifestyle. We conducted a three-year evaluation uh, of the drug court program, which included uh, following 150 drug court clients uh, one year. For those who are dependent on drugs and alcohol, when they enter this program, they're remaining clean at the time of interviews a year away from that arrest date. It's very encouraging. It appeared Cleveland was right up there with some of the most innovative drug court programs uh, in the nation. If somebody asked me why we're successful and why people come up in the street and thank me, I would say the reason is because we act like a family. We actually add something more to the judicial system taking care of a client's addiction. What we do is we literally become part of their family and we want them to succeed. Our success rate, I think, is because we all are impassioned about it. The average cost in Ohio for housing an individual in prison for one year is $25,000, as opposed to an average of $3,500 for treatment. If they got help and they were rehabilitated, it's cheaper to do that than lock them up and, and throw away the key in many cases. It's probably easy to think about in terms of buying a car. The sticker on one window is $8,000, and I'll sell it to you for 8000 bucks. Or if you want, you can come around to the other door and look at the other sticker on the window, and that's $150,000. Which would you prefer to spend? Now what if I said, if you spend the $8,000 for this car, I will assure you that this car works six out of 10 months. If you spend $150,000 on this car, I can assure you that this car will only work one out of every 10 months. Now, which price would you prefer to pay? Drug courts are the $8,000 car. The reality is many people in the perils of alcohol and drug dependency use the emergency room as a doctor's office, as a dentist's office. Uh, they're there often because they've OD'd free them of drug and alcohol and they can make better decisions. It saves families, it saves friends, it does a lot of things for the community. It's, just, it's just unbelievable what, what drug court can do. It works. I see it working all the time. Drug court works. Drug court is working. Drug court works is because it leads to reunification of children with their parents. Drug court works and that's across the nation, just not here in Cleveland. The biggest challenge is to get more people involved and embrace the view that drug rehabilitation is better than putting people in jail. I'd like to see drug courts work so well that the community eventually say, we don't need drug courts. But we could do more if the program was implemented countywide. I really would hope that there would be some way that we could expand the current system of our drug court now. Well, there's going to be an expansion. Uh, it's, more than a, it's more than a discussion. The Cleveland Municipal Drug Court will be the county drug court and we'll be treating everybody just the same but be doing it on a countywide basis. Joe, when it was started 10 years ago, I was not in favor of it. I was like, how can this possibly work? But now, after years of seeing Judge Jones' program, going to the graduations, I am a convert, and I am uh, happy to say that I would welcome the drug court in Cuyahoga County. I just want to be helpful to someone and let somebody know that you can get off of drugs. You can stay off of drugs, you can get a new program, you can get a new life, and I just want to be an example to let them know that it really works. It works for me. One day at a time, absolutely. Anybody could do it. doesn't matter how old or how young. I'm 51, and I'm not proud of what I did. And I'm sorry for all the hurt and anguish I put my family through. But if it wasn't for Miss Anita, Jess, Judge Jones, I wouldn't be standing here. Drug Court gives fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters their lives back. Graduation may be the end of Drug Court, but it is only the beginning of the rest of their lives.